Fracture femur types. Fracture femur can occur in the proximal part of the femur. It can also occur in the diaphysis or in the distal part of the femur. In the proximal part of the femur, the fracture can be in the head and it is called Pipkin fracture and it usually occurs with hip dislocation. We usually reduce the dislocation urgently and fix the femoral head fracture if needed. And fixation is usually needed in the majority of cases. Displacement of the femoral head needs surgery. Surgery is done usually by an anterior Smith-Peterson approach and you can see the head better. Sometimes you use trans trochanteric approach for Pipkin type 4 when there is a combined fracture of the establum and the femoral head. In Pipkin 3, you want to do open reduction of the dislocation, otherwise you may displace the non-displaced femoral neck. Here is the classification of Pipkin fractures. Femoral head blood supply is the medial femoral circumflex artery. In femoral neck fractures, the orientation of the fracture is very important. Powell's type 3 had the highest risk of evascular necrosis and non-union, and here is the classification. Subcapital femoral neck fracture. The fracture can range from non-displaced to totally displaced. The treatment is usually based on the displacement and age of the patient, especially the physiologic age of the patient. The mortality rate is about 25% in one year. In the young, we try to save the head of the femur. We do anatomic and accurate reduction of the fracture. If we can't reduce the fracture closed, then we open the fracture and reduce the fracture. The fracture must be anatomically reduced before we fix it. We usually use cancellous screws, three of them at or above the lesser trochanter. If there is a comminution of the femoral neck, we may add another one. In this fracture, the complication rate is high. Complication of a vascular necrosis, a non-union. And the more vertical the fracture, the more likely the patient will have complication. In young patients, if the fracture does not heal, we do subtrochanteric valgus osteotomy to redirect the forces and change it from vertical shear forces to compressive forces. A femoral neck fracture in the elderly, if the fracture is not displaced, you can do percutaneous screws. There is really no advantage of doing prosthesis in a non-displaced femoral neck fracture in the elderly. If the fracture of the femoral neck is displaced, you got three important things you must know. Number one, don't do close reduction and the screw fixation. The failure rate and the reoperation rate is high, maybe up to 40%. Number two, if the patient is old, debilitated, minimal ambulation, minimal activity, then you give them a femoral prosthesis, such as unipolar or bipolar. And we do a total hip replacement for an active older patient. There is a slight increase of risk for hip dislocation. You can also have trochanteric fracture. The gluteus, medius, and minimus will pull that fracture apart, and if the fracture is displaced, you need to fix it.
Isolated fracture of the lesser trochanter may be a sign of malignancy. It's usually a pathological fracture. In the proximal femur, you also can have intertrochanteric fracture, and it can be a regular fracture or reverse oblique fracture. For both, we usually use a short iron rod for fixation. In the regular pattern of intertrochanteric fracture, if the fracture is stable before or after reduction, you can use compression hip screw. Try to obtain a tip apex distance less than 2.5 cm with the fixation. Unstable, you will use rod. If you use compression hip screw, then it is the wrong device. You can have medial displacement of the shaft and you may have anterior flexion deformity on the left side. Lateral femoral cortex, while integrity is important, the reoperation rate is more in this patient when the lateral cortex is involved. In general, a fracture that involves the lateral cortex of the femur is a bad one. And if the lateral cortex is thin, less than 2.5 cm, a rod is probably better, but that fracture may get more complications. Another fracture is the subtrochanteric fracture of the femur. In general, in the subtroch, the muscle will create deformity. The proximal fragment will be flexed, abducted, and externally rotated, as you can see here in this diagram. And various malreduction is common. Usually tough fracture to heal. The fracture occurs in a hard cortical bone and is usually a high energy fracture that's exposed to a lot of stresses and can lead to non-union and implant failure. Intramedullary rod is a good solution for that fracture and the fracture is usually treated by long iron rod. And there is a typical fracture of the subtroch from biphosphonate. It is a transverse fracture laterally and the spike medially. The insertion point for the iron rod is important. Here is the proper position for performance entry nailing. In general, with iron rods, if entry point is anteriorly, you create a fracture of the proximal femur. And if the entry point is posteriorly, you create penetration or a fracture of the distal femur. There is no win situation. You just got to be careful. Then fracture of the femur in the diaphysis, it ranges from stable to butterfly, to complex, all that's not important because all fracture shaft femurs that are simple or complex, stable or unstable, all are treated by early stabilization with a statically locked anti-grade reamed nail performance entry with weight bearing as tolerated. Posterior entry will have complication of perforation of the femur distally anteriorly. Anterior entry will have a complication of bursting of the proximal femur. Bilateral femur fracture will have an increased risk of pulmonary complication and mortality. Bilateral femur fracture, we usually try to do retrograde rod. Some people prefer non ream now we go to a fracture of the distal femur. The fracture can be extra-articular or it can be intra-articular, like partial articular, like a condyle fracture, like a half a fracture, which is coronally oriented fracture 
usually extend through the lateral condyle and it can be missed. X-rays may not show it well. You may need CT scan to show it. The Hava fracture can be treated by a headless compression screw from anteriorly to posteriorly or from posteriorly to anteriorly. The fracture also can be a complete articular fracture, as you can see here in this diagram. Complete articular fracture and partial articular fractures are usually treated by plates. The articular surface must be reduced anatomically and fixed with compression lag screws inside the plate or outside the plate. Using log plates causes a lot of non-unions because the plate is stiff. And when the fracture is extra articular, you can treat that with a plate or with retrograde iron rod. And then there is a periprosthetic fracture, fracture of the distal femur above a total knee replacement. It can be a fracture of the femur around or below a total hip replacement. Or you can have ipsilateral fracture of the femoral neck and shaft of the femur. All these three types of fractures are complex. The fracture above the total knee replacement, you can treat it by a rod or by a plate. The fracture around the total hip replacement, it can be A or B or C. C is below the prosthesis and you can treat that by open reduction and internal fixation with a plate. And B have three types. B1, B2, and B3. B1, there is a fracture in the vicinity of the prosthesis, and the prosthesis is stable, so you can treat that by open reduction internal fixation of the fracture. B2, you have a fracture, but the prosthesis is loose. I call it the B2 bomber. So you need to have fixation of the fracture, and long cementless prosthesis. And B3, the prosthesis is loose, but you don't have enough bone, so you may need a tumor prosthesis, or you may need to have allograft replacement of the proximal femur. And A is a fracture that's not really important, that usually does not compromise the stability of the prosthesis, like fractures in trochanters, for example. Now we come to the last type, which is ipsilateral femoral neck and shaft fracture. This is a complicated fracture. The femoral neck fracture can be missed, suspected when you have comminuted fracture of the femoral shaft. You can see it better by x-rays with internal rotation of the hip, but CT scan is better. Do not use one device to fix both fractures. The priority is for fixation of the femoral neck fracture. It should be fixed first. We usually use compression cancellous screws, but occasionally we use a hip compression screw. Then after that, you can do retrograde nailing of the femoral shaft fracture. If you use one device to fix both, you have a very high chance of having one of these fractures malaligned. Usually, this femoral neck fracture is occult, it can be missed, may not be diagnosed, and this will result in a bad outcome if it is missed. If the femoral neck fracture is discovered after fixing the femur with an arm rod, because the patient complains of pain in the hip and he can walk, then you will need to reduce the femoral neck and do a screw fixation, usually around the rod. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.